A big warm welcome back to Rick's Scare Model Fix and it's kit review time. This time we're going to be taking a look at Airfix's hugely anticipated 148 scale Blackburn Buccaneer S2C stroke D. Just before we start the review it's worthy of a mention that this kit bears no direct comparison to Airfix's earlier Buccaneer kit which was released in 1994. Getting the kit on the workbench and one thing that uh, certainly draws attention is the size of the box so this is currently on a A2 cutting mat and the box is 50 centimeters long so it's a little bit too big for my workbench hence why we've got an absolutely gorgeous shot there of what I think is probably some of the best Airfix box top artwork we've seen if you like your Airfix artwork this kit's not going to disappoint as there is actually two pieces of artwork uh, adjoined to the box. So for all the Airfix box art fans out there there's the secondary box art and on the box side we've got the four options included in the kit. So it's also worth mentioning that the artwork for the box top covers the complete box top with the red band there at the bottom of the box which is a nice touch you could actually cut that out and put that on the workshop wall if you so wished. Lifting the lid and the first thing that's going to hit you straight in the face is the change of plastic. So just looking at the quickly in the bags it's the dark grey plastic that's been featured in some of Airfix's previous releases. I think the Stuka and the P40 and the Victor maybe have been in this plastic. Clay parts individually bagged two sprues in there, three sprues in there so far. We've got two sprues in the next bag, weapons and uh, flight controls by the looks of it. The main sprue, sprue A, cockpit tub and fuselage and engines and intakes there as well. And then at the bottom of the box, kit decal sheet. So we'll come to the plastic parts shortly. We'll just put those back in the box and we'll have a look through the instruction booklet and see what we can expect from the build. So the instruction booklet is quite a hefty document, I'm just having a look through, it's 36 pages there and is of Airfix's usual type. On the front page we've got some multilingual information about the aircraft type. On the inside of the front cover carries on with some more aircraft specifications and data, some information regarding the assembly instructions and the icons used in the instructions to highlight processes throughout the build. So it's worth just familiarising yourself with those. Straight away on page three, Airfix sort of dictate that you're going to have to decide on an option to build, A, B, C or D, and they correspond to the decal options in the kit. So we've got scheme A, which is a Martel loaded airframe, scheme B, which has got the slipper tanks and rocket pods, scheme C, which is bombs on the wing pylons and scheme D which is the bombs in the bomb bay and the pylons on the wings empty. Turning the page and again we've got some more information dedicated to each of the schemes so it's going to be worth paying attention here and reading thoroughly before diving in. So it's just highlighting in blue which I think is a really nice touch and it makes it really clear which holes you need to open for the weapons fit of each of the schemes A, B, C and D as they are all different and that just avoids confusion so nice touch airfix that's nicely laid out. Assembly starts with the position of the internal decals so we've got decals there for the cockpit and it looks quite comprehensive we've got stencil data for the ejector seat and main control panel and side consoles and then assembly for real starts on page 9 where we've got a multi-piece ejector seat. So we've got the 
nice details there, all building up separately with the ejector pull handles and it is saying that there's a decal there for the seatbelt harness <coughs> instrument panel bolting on to the back of the pilot seat which is saying it's stage 9 it doesn't actually say which seat it is uh, the seats are different in the Buccaneer for the front and rear crew turning over the page and again we're on to step 12 already which sees the nose gear bay being assembled and then this is very very similar in construction to the Tamiya Phantom and Tomcat where the actual consoles fit onto the cockpit tub so that'll make painting a lot easier and then an overall diagram showing where everything goes there to the bottom of the page rear bulkhead going in on step 18 and the front instrument panel and then we see the ejector seats coming in on 20 and 21 it is correct that the rear seat is offset as you're looking at the front of the aircraft to the left so that's not an error so just make sure that that's correct but having said that there's a big slot there in the bulkhead so you're unlikely to get that wrong 22 and 23 sees what is a container for the nose weight and a nice touch there for a Murphix. You can join those two together and fill that with your desired weight and it's saying we need 15 grams. Just in the front nose section we've got some more sidewall details so the cockpit is looking as though it's going to be very comprehensive and there's that funnel or container for the nose weight, nice touch there again. Crew ladders, brilliant, love to see these, it does add a little bit more interest to a static model and also with them being a different colour and nice flash of colour. So if you want to use those then open the holes as it's indicated there. Other side of the fuselage, see some more details being added before finally the cockpit tub is inserted into one side of the fuselage and it's saying click so you want a nice click there which will hold everything in place and make sure that you get perfect alignment. Just at the bottom of page 13 sees the instrument combing being added and the heads up display. So first impressions of the cockpit it looks to be extremely well detailed and a massive improvement over the older kit which just relied on flat surfaces and decals. One thing that is becoming a sort of slightly deja vu feeling of the 72nd scale kit in the way this kit goes together. And at the time of recording this review, I'm currently working on 72nd scale Airfix Buccaneer, and the similarities are quite uh, straightforward and it does build up in a similar way looking at this, which is not a bad thing because those kits do really go together quite well. So on page 14 and step 32 we see a whole plethora of internal detail and this is what's going to give this fuselage centre section its strength ultimately and also aid alignment of a lot of the parts of the wings, the rear and the forward nose. So we do have intakes, intake cross sections and bulkheads going in place and that makes up the main gear bay as we can see there and um, exactly as the 70 second sales get it's inserted into the lower section of the fuselage. Jet pipes and we do have an engine okay it's a bit of lacking detail maybe but it's a good starting point if you wish to uh, add a bit more wiring to that. Stage 42 you just need to be following the instructions carefully if you do want to install your engine but it does say in step 40 build steps 40 to 43 even if building the model with the engine cover closed as it does help with correct alignment so take your warnings there from Airfix it might be that you, uh, you want to adhere to that advice. Turning the page and we have more detail for that engine so it does say miss out steps 44 to 47 if building the model with the engine cover closed see steps 65 to 68 on page 21 if building the model with the engine cover open another design feature I'm sure the designer is very proud of is masks for that open engine bay and also it's nice to see that there's no 
misguided information about where to remove the plastic as we do actually have a number of holes already sort of chain drilled if you like just waiting for you to open there once you've drilled them out moving on to the page 17 of the instruction booklet and we start assembly of the wings with the radar warning receivers there are different types in the kit so again please pay attention to the instruction books they're clearly marked version A, B, C and D 1551 see the aerons coming together before turning the page and looking at getting the fuselage together so again identical to the 72nd scale method of construction just pay attention here there's some information dotted around here in notes so to allow correct alignment with the rear fuselage see step 71 on page 22 do not use glue on the surfaces highlighted in red and then we've got some holes to open up for aerial fit and other bits and pieces and it's saying to build a model with unfolded wings miss out stages 52 to 58 which obviously see the wings being built up in two sections as we can see there folded wings we've got some really substantial wing fold brackets there the one of the criticisms of the older kit was that those outer wing panels in the folded position were just held on by a thread basically and were very very unstable and certainly on the model I built kept falling off vortex generators are nicely rendered and we do need to remove one as highlighted in the inset there outer wing panels wing tips two wing tips are included in the kit so again just follow the part numbers and make sure that you are employing the correct ones repeated for the opposite side before that substantial section just coming in to join up to the fuselage lower surface I think there upper surface now being joined again it's just a different procedure for wings folded or wings extended and we pick the instructions up again with some of this detail being added to the open engine bay so it does say nice little touches and other design as a modeler well done Pramjit assemble this part at the end of the build so obviously you're not going to break that off rear tail section just as per the 72nd scale kit joining on now hopefully this seam will be slightly better it is slightly challenging in the 72nd scale kit but nothing untoward as we can see here and we've got a good fit there so it does break down in a very similar fashion no section coming on again it's the only way to model the bucking here really and um, was the downfall of the earlier release by trying to have the fuselage halves in a vertical and sort of upper and lower section being joined together like that intakes coming on nice touch with the intake rings no nasty masking as they're silver careful clean up and painting be able to add those on at the end of the build or after you've painted the intakes with a spot of super glue or PVA rear jet pipes coming on so the build progressing now quite quickly and you've got flaps there can be deployed 40 degrees it's saying ailerons and their actuators coming in there and then it's on to the tailplane quite a characteristic t-tail with the buccaneer different fin tops again so watch your versions and some fin bullets as well elevators are separate pieces so those could be posed dynamically if you wish air brake open or closed be interesting to see if the holes are drilled or flashed over in this one different ones with reinforcing plates etc so again just follow your versions through on what you're doing Bombay detail starting to be forefront of the assembly now it, it's not the bulged Bombay it is the flat one now I believe from talking with FX that the release schedule for this kit will mirror the 72nd scale kit so we will see 
RAF versions in due course. Another nice little touch is seeing that the wiring and the sort of wiring looms and pipe work for the bomb bay is that are actually separate pieces. So that will make painting so much easier and that bomb bay looks to have a wealth of detail in it. Some more pipe work there in the main gear base finishes page 27. So we're up to stage 111 already and we're looking at painting some of the undercarriage parts and another brilliant touch by Airfix it's actually give the diameter there of the wheel so if you want to cut a mask it's 7.6 millimeters just simple but a really nice touch main gear sorry nose gear bay going in the main gear is two parts but cleanup's not going to be that hard and again we've just got those measurements for your masks for your centre section of your wheel of 11mm such a simple thing but saves a lot of time certainly if you've got a larger punch and die set you can just pick up the one you want to mask those wheels that's fine or even if you've got a circle template you know it's 11mm decals for the main gear legs so you need to just keep your eye on them they're easily missed nice little inserts showing orientation of all those gear legs and how it should look on the finished build. Undercarriage doors look to have some lovely detail on the inside there and they just simply slot in place and again another decal just being highlighted on the front of each main gear leg. One thing that's becoming apparent this is a really well detailed kit so time is going to be your best friend with this one just take your time build through it and I think there's nothing in there so far that's raised any alarm bells saying, well, that might be a little bit tricky. So it's looking good so far. These are those two options of wing tip or wing leading edge uh, radar warning receivers. So make sure you get the correct ones for your versions. Wing tips, again, it's the larger version. So make sure you use those off the clear spray. Tail bump. A rest of hook, some lumps and bumps, aerials and etc. Just look to be exactly the same as the 72nd scale kit there. Pilot figures, bird strike screen and front canopy. It's interesting to note that Airfix have moulded the front canopy with no windscreen wiper or with a windscreen wiper and it does say the windscreen option without the wiper has been included to allow a photo etch wiper to be fitted. Haddad, do you know something we don't? Uh, we've got the MDC in the later style of canopy there, so we'll have a look at that on the clear sprue in due course to see how that's been rendered. Canopy's going in, it is open or closed. In flight refueling probe, aerials and beacons. And that's pretty much the build concluded. Turning to page 32 and stage 137 of the assembly sequence and it's looking at building up the TV Martel anti-shipping missile, associated pylons and also the Martel anti-radiation missile and again associated pylons and it's nice to see this fin arrangement which makes sure everything's in correct alignment. Pylons again and TV guidance data link pod. Page 33 and we see more pylons and again it's nice to see that these are being given some attention as sadly sometimes they get overlooked in the kits. Matter of rocket launchers, slipper tanks etc. So a good selection of weaponry that was commonly used on the Royal Navy version of the Buccaneer. That doesn't stop there, we've got more pylons for the wings with £1,000 retard bombs and a fully furnished bomb bay, should you wish. Just to finish the model off, now we have the crew access ladders which go in place on the starboard nose. We've got FOD and intake blanks, another brilliant touch, should be mandatory in every fast jet kit and it just adds so much to the finished model. And like I said about the crew ladders, with these being red and the airframe being extra dark sea grey, it's just a nice little bit of colour as well and we've got jet pipe blanks and plugs there as well. 
step 171 just sees the wings slotted in place to complete your build if you have the photo wing option. Wow! So that is a massive instruction book but again going through there like I pointed out in the narration there's nothing that's alarming or looks as though it's going to be hold on a minute that might be a bit complex so even though it's quite thick and pretty good detail overall I don't think it's going to be too much of a challenge to put this one together. So we had a detailed look at the instruction books and the paperwork included in the kit in the first part of this video. So now we go on to take a look at some of the airframe and the plastic parts. So the runners are quite big, the aircraft is quite big. So this is sprue A and the first thing that drawn my eye is that Bombay and the detail included in that Bombay is absolutely incredible. There's fine recessed panel lines and rivet detail and I'm just having to think to myself is this actually an Airfix kit? You could be mistaken for this being Tamiya. It's perfectly moulded, can't see any flash on any of the sprues or any of the parts, I can't really see anything initially that jumps out and say that that's an issue. There's no short shot on this sprue. The only thing I would argue is that perhaps the air brake should have been drilled out but that's not going to take too long to drill through those. But they are quite recessed. Might even get away with just a wash in there. Blind side. Yes there's ejector pin marks. You're going to get those on any kit. Is there anything that's going to be visible on the finished model? Maybe one or two. But we'll deal with those as we go through the build. Just having a look at the upper fuselage section. Hopefully you can appreciate and see that rivet detail. And the plastic is dark grey. I'll just try and find some air fixed plastic. So just to highlight the change in plastic, this is a sprue from their 72nd scale Buccaneer kit. And as you can see, the colour difference and the texture of the plastic is a lot different. Why is that important? Well, that plastic being harder captures the detail and makes it crisper. It's not as blurred or as soft if you like. So overall this is looking as good as anything that I've had on the workbench in the last few years. With the experience of the 72nd scale kits I'm going to say it again that I think the build process will be straightforward. I don't think it's going to take too much uh, time to put it together. Sprue gates and attachment points are well thought out. They're not too big. So in some cases there are areas that won't even affect the fit of the parts. Cockpit tub, as we can see there, is devoid of any detail other than the basics and that, as we'll see, is built up with those separate panels. Sprue B, and we've got some of the internal structure there and the air brakes. So one of the things that I might just pick up on is you're going to have to chop and change between sprues as you're going through the build. I mean the internal structures with the air brake details, how picky is it? I mean it's not the end of the world if you have to put a sprue down and pick another one up. But some of the manufacturers do complete sections of builds on certain sprues. Pilot figures are included, there's that funnel for the weights and again nothing visible in terms of any defects whatsoever. Sprue C contains the wings and again the rivet detail is just absolutely fantastic. I don't know whether the camera will pick it up but I do intend on doing a video build of this and we'll put a wash in there if you can't see that just to highlight how good that detail is. The vortex generators are superbly moulded and look to be in scale as well and again no flash no short shots and there's air fixes way of aligning the parts with rings and circles rather than pins so again just making sure that you might want to just remove some of these ejector pin towers on the tail section 
as they do look to be a little bit proud and they would interfere with the fit so just be careful there. In-flight refueling probe looks to be equally well detailed. There's all the bracketry and hinges for the wing fold. Weapons spray, not much to say. It's got bombs and missiles and some drop tanks there and data link pods as described in the instruction book. But again, level of detail is really quite nice and the details on some of these pylons is absolutely is fascinating and sadly like I said in a lot of the kits that you see these days is an overlooked or an afterthought and they look a little bit odd but not in this case they're in keeping with the rest of the airframe and will look really good once finished so this is sprue E and looking at this I would go as far as to say that this is the sprue that's going to be the difference between the Royal Naval and RAF versions. It's got the slipper tanks in there, and the matter of rocket pods, pylons and fin tips. It's got the arrestor hook bay and the bomb bay, which in this one is the non bulge type. There's a nice little arrow just showing which direction to fit that. Again, no mold issues, no flash, no sink marks or short shots that I can see on first inspection. Sprue G deals with a lot of the detailing parts and we can see the ejector seats and these are, again are a work of art. I know I keep going on about this but you can see the designer's passion uh, for this aircraft and wanting to do it justice and it certainly shows in what's on the sprues. Cockpit, if you're not a fan of decals then you've got a whole host of raised instrument there you can pass your time painting in every individual switch and lever. Wheels look really nice. And it's just drawn my eye to the detail on those inside of those undercarriage doors. I'm just trying to get you in really close on the camera there. Just to do that justice. That is the level of detail that this kit is employed throughout. And I'm just blown away with it. Sprue H contains some of the detail parts for the Bombay, so we've got those separate bits of pipe work, wingtip warning receivers and those FOD intake blanks and engine blanks, crew access ladders and that mask for the engine panel. And again the inside of that door is well detailed with raised rivets. Rear side of the sprue we've got no evidence of any flaws in the tooling. Okay sprue I has the clear parts there's quite a few of them so we've got the wing tips and the canopies and the MDC is moulded internally as we saw in the instruction books there's not really going to be a great deal you can do with that it's not it's actually feels as though it's embedded in the glass so but it's fine fine enough to leave as is. So there we have Airfix's brand new 2022 tooling of their 48 scale Blackburn Buccaneer 2SC stroke D. Now I know many modelers have craved a modern 48 scale Buccaneer for a long time. It's, they are not going to be disappointed with this kit. I was slightly drawn into the price debate in the, earlier in the video and I can just say that anyone says that this kit is too expensive I'm sadly mistaken. We would like to see them all cheaper obviously but considering what is in that box then I think in the current climate and the world that we find ourselves in at the moment it's a fair price for what is a truly fantastic kit. I really like what Airfix are doing at the moment and for me having built quite a few of their kits and indeed in the past drawn some criticism for it and being labelled an Airfix fanboy I must admit I've not come across an Airfix offering as good as this it could well be their coming of age kit and if anything they've set the standard for future releases another thing I also like about Airfix at the moment is the way that they integrate and speak to modelers they're very approachable where else have you been able to stand at a show and openly chat with the person who designed the kit. It does offer an insight 
into what they've gone through and the processes that they've employed in bringing the model of that kit but also what comes across is the passion that they've got and the innovation to bring those things into the instruction booklet and the kit itself just simple things like the diameter of the wheels it's so easy to do and it's so convenient for the modeler because you've got the dimensions there immediately a nose weight holder if like me you've spilt your liquid gravity all over the workshop floor trying to fill a nose then that's a time saver and it's fantastic and you know it all fits in without compromising the nose joint so for me so far this is my kit of the year what well, I'm thinking there's gonna have to take something really special to beat this one and it's one that I can't wait to get on the bench and thoroughly enjoy the build now I've built their old 1994 tooling which was challenging but again it looked good and I think I've still got it somewhere in the depths of the man cave in a box I'll try and dig that out if I can and we can do a comparison at the end of the build I've also built two of their 70 second scale kits and the build sequence looks to be very very similar in this one I bleat with a hell of a lot more detail but why change something if it works and that 70 second scale kit goes together really well so that's probably the longest kit review I've done on the channel and what a worthy sort of contender and example of what Airfix can do when they really put their mind to it and I think I'm just can't think of anything to say and at one point I think I mentioned in the video there that I did have to just remind myself that it was an Airfix kit. So that's it from me so until next time please look after yourselves stay well and take care.